lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota, and SixFootMama.com. This is Still Growing with Jennifer Ebling. Still Growing is a gardening podcast dedicated to helping you and your garden grow. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Still Growing, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. Well, last week, I started out the show by telling you that I was going to get my Christmas decorations down. I was going to take the tree down and get the house all ready for January, and it didn't happen. This week, we got completely sidetracked by a number of things that happened, including, let me just give you the list in case you're in my camp and you just haven't even begun to tackle the Christmas takedown. Oh, it's so embarrassing. Uh, Let's see. We started out the week, uh, my son PJ broke his finger at a basketball game on Saturday. That was game two. He played through game three because the EMT that was on site said he could move his finger, that he should just keep playing. And then it turns out it's broken. Well, then Monday, we ended up going to the orthopedist to see, does it need surgery? What what are they going to do for it? And that ended up being a five-hour appointment. Because when you live in Minnesota and it snows and it rains and you have freezing rain, people fall. And so we walked in to Tria, where we go for all the orthopedic things that the kids need. And I kid you not, there were like 30 people in the waiting room. There were so many people in the waiting room that we actually had to go out into the lobby of this hospital-like facility and wait in like the backup lobby. It's like when you go late to church and you end up in the overflow room. That's kind of what it was like for us as we were sitting there waiting to see the doctor. But so we had this uh, break happen on Monday. PJ, we go to the doctor on, or that was Saturday. We go to the doctor on Monday. That ends up being five hours. And Mondays are usually a day I'll spend working on getting the show produced. And so that day went by the wayside. Tuesday night, my daughter's in her room doing homework and she sees a mouse run across the floor. And it was so funny because we had just had a family meeting about closing doors. Don't bring food up to your room. You know, they're teenagers now. So it's like kind of living in a frat house again or uh, in college. I always tell the kids, I feel like I'm back in college because you come into the kitchen and people have made eggs or they've, you know, started a project and then just kind of walked away. So this is my life right now. And I, and, and so I felt like God had my back on Tuesday night because it just drove home these two key points we've been making with the kids, which is shut the door, don't bring food to your room. So thank you, thank you. Uh, I think that uh, point got across. So anyway, so that happened on Tuesday. And then I had a dear friend who lost his mom on Friday last week. And the the service was this Thursday. And uh, I went down to the wake on Wednesday. So between all of those crazy things that happened very unexpectedly, my week uh, took a turn for the worse. And I just wasn't able to get anything accomplished other than just living life. Now, there was a real highlight of the week this week that happened for us, and that is that my youngest, John, who's in fifth grade, his essay for the D.A.R.E. program was the winning essay for his class, and then it, it ended up being for his entire grade. So he stood up and he read his D.A.R.E. essay out loud to the entire class. All the parents were there. And he did a great job. In fact, I recorded audio of him reading his little uh, essay that he wrote about staying drug and alcohol and violence free. And I think you'll get a kick out of it. I'm going to play it at the very end of this show. So it'll be the Easter egg at the end of the show. So when the outro is finished, you'll hear just a little bit of silence. And if you want to hear John deliver his speech on his essay called Making Smart Life Choices. 
So that'll be at the very end of the program today. You know, he, as a reward, he gets to get picked up by a squad car next Friday. So when this episode's released, think about little John. He'll be getting picked up by a squad car, taken to a local pizza place and Gino's, and he'll be having lunch with the chief of police. He is thrilled beyond measure. Well, let's get going with our show today. I want to begin by by welcoming new members to our Facebook group. And I'm so delighted that you continue to go to Facebook and join this group. I love to meet listeners of the show in the group. And it's also a place where guests are invited to join. So my vision for the group was that guests and listeners of the show could continue the conversation after each episode. So last week, we just had Peggy Ann Montgomery on the show of American Beauty Native Plants. And I know she would be thrilled to talk to you if you have any questions about growing native plants or incorporating them into your garden for 2017. Well, new members in this Facebook group this week include Sarah Caulfield Lavalley, Valerie Hoinecke, Regina Marie Moret, Matt Jer, and Paul Cosmeri. Welcome, you guys. And if you'd like to join the group, all you need to do is go to Facebook and then search Still Growing Podcast Group in the search bar and this group will pop right up. Now, this is a private group. So if you share something in the group, it is private. The rest of Facebook cannot see what is posted in that group. The downside to this is that you can't share something really easily that's been posted in the group. You know how sometimes somebody will share something on Facebook and then you want to show it to your friends? You really can't do that in this group unless you go to the source. So like if I'm referencing a particular article, go click through to that on Chrome or Safari or whatever your browser is, and then copy and paste that link into a new Facebook post. That's how you'd have to do it. But this is a private group. And so when you first click on still growing podcast group, it's going to show up like it's a closed group. But all you have to do is request to join and then as soon as I verify that you are a real person, because I'm trying to minimize any spam or unwanted content in the group, then I will just admit you to the group and we'll move forward. And once you're in the group, you can interact with guests of the show, other listeners of the show, and you will also be eligible to win any of the wonderful giveaways from my guests and sponsors. So last week, when Peggy Ann Montgomery was on the show, she offered to give away Way, a lovely book by Doug Tallamy, and it's called Bringing Nature Home. And the winner is Elizabeth Kiefner. So congratulations, Elizabeth. If you would like to win a giveaway related to the Still Growing Podcast, you definitely have to get in that Facebook group. So once again, just go to Facebook and search up Still Growing Podcast Group, and that's where you'll need to be if you want to win any of the wonderful prizes from my guests and sponsors. Well, the group is also where I curate content for you guys in between episodes. So I work really hard to stay abreast of a lot of the wonderful things that are happening in the world of gardening and horticulture. And as I'm doing that, I will share what I'm finding with you so that you can benefit from that. And then also continue to chat with you throughout the week about things that you're interested in learning more about. So if you're in the group, you automatically have access to that content and you can reference it at any time. But I thought what I would do is start to put together a top 10 list of things that I shared in the group this past week, hopefully to kind of whet your appetite a little bit and be an encouragement, a little bit of an enticement to join the group. So here we go. I'll go through my top 10 list of things that made it into the group this week. It's not a comprehensive list, but I'll give you an idea of some of the things that got shared. The first thing that I shared are these wonderful garden t-shirts from I Heart Apparel. And they have really clever garden sayings on them. And I love a really funny garden t-shirt. So they have things like this shirt, my favorite one said, I love gardening from my head, tomatoes. So you have to kind of elongate the word tomatoes. So from my head to my toes, but it's a really, really cute shirt. They're like, all the shirts are about $23 and it's, you know, just fun stuff. Everything from, you know, plant whisperer to 
uh, let's see here, I grow my own food or gardening is cheaper than therapy, that kind of stuff. So cute t-shirts. I think you can get them in a variety of colors. But if you're looking for some fun things to wear this summer when you're in the garden, it's a great place to go, a great idea for gifts for the gardener in your life. The second post had to do with spices and culinary herbs. I ran across this wonderful art print at art.com, and it's very visual, and it shows the leaves and seed pods of spices and culinary herbs, and they're all laid out, and you get a sense for the size, the scale, the color of all of the different spices and herbs available to us. That's just a stunning print. So to me, if you were, let's say, redoing your kitchen and you were looking for a really cool piece of art to have, this would be a really nice option. And it's $13. I think the print's like $12.59 or something. And it ships within 24 hours. So the print itself is 24 inches by 36 inches. It's a print. And I believe you can get it framed as well. So obviously framing would be an additional price. But the print itself is $12.59. And I think it looks absolutely lovely. So give that a look if you're interested. Number three is a wonderful series that Gardenista does every single week, I believe, and they call it Gardening 101. And this week, the post was all about arugula. And they did a great job using wonderful visuals, great photographs, showed a ton of different varieties, some of the standard varieties, some of the wild varieties, and then talked about harvesting and growing and how to keep it alive, that kind of stuff. So really great series. I love the Gardening 101 series by Gardenista, and I usually feature some kind of post from them throughout the week in this series because it's a great way to introduce people to new plants and new plant varieties if they haven't grown these things before. So this week, it's all about arugula. Number four is this adorable post, and it's called Cute Baby Picks from the World of Fungi. It's by Rebecca Westcott, and it shows all of these little emerging mushrooms and fungi in the forest. Just adorable. Number five on the list, of course, was a number of articles that I found about that beautiful sequoia, that giant redwood that had fell over in the storm in California. It's the one that had the drive-through tunnel in it. And the, there was one article in particular that I found that had talked about how to save the remaining sequoias and what work is being done to preserve and conserve this wonderful treasure. You know, last week I had shared in the group this wonderful article that was on Environment 360 at Yale University, and it was this interview with the author of the best-selling book, The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wallenben. And I certainly hope that that book is on your bookshelf right now that you've purchased it. I think it is a must-have book for gardeners. And of course, the article was all about this discovery or these discoveries that Peter is sharing about trees as sentient beings, as beings that can communicate with each other, can heal, can adapt. And I would love to hear what Peter has to say about the sequoias in California. Well, as long as we're getting into a deeper understanding here of the world around us, I was reading in Permaculture, this website out of the UK, and I was very drawn to the title because the article title is The Secrets of Water, The Work of Victor Schauberger. And it turns out that this linked to a very long documentary on the genius of Victor Schauberger and his son, Walter, who spent their lives researching and utilizing water's hidden qualities. It was absolutely fascinating. So if you kind of geek out on these things, this video will be very captivating for you. But I want to warn you, it is long. It's over an hour long. I sat and I watched the entire thing. And when I was done, all I could think was, oh my gosh, if I'm a landscape designer and I'm creating water features for gardens, This video would be on my must-watch 
list because once you understand some of the basic water principles that Schauberger had discovered and that really I think have kind of been lost to us, I think it's going to change how you create and build your water features. So give it a look. It's definitely worth your time. You can find it again in the Facebook group for Still Growing, so you don't have to take any notes. But if you don't want to join the group and you just want to look this video up on your own, just look for Hidden Nature, the Startling Insights of Victor Schauberger. And the film is by Franz Fitzky and Jorg Schauberger. And I think Jorg is the grandson of Victor. So absolutely fascinating. I don't think anybody can watch this video and not think about water in a completely new way. And I think that Peter Wallenben, the author of that book, The Hidden Life of Trees, the German forester, would completely agree with the revelations in this video and the work of Victor Schauberger. Well, in the number six spot of posts that made it into the Facebook group this week, uh, there were two posts, actually, and they both have to do with keeping Christmas plants alive into the new year. So if you've managed to hang on to a poinsettia, there was a wonderful post that was in CBC News for Prince Edward Island talking all about caring for poinsettias, amaryllis, and Christmas cactus so that they will last and kind of in a very sweet little post. There was also a post that was shared in Nova Scotia all about a Halifax man who grew a poinsettia for 19 years. And this gentleman's late wife won the plant on Christmas Eve in 1996. And to honor her, he's managed to keep it alive. It stands more than one and a half meters tall, measures more than 3.6 meters around and it weighs more than a hundred pounds. So very impressive. I, I tell you what, I have managed to keep a poinsettia alive for I think over a year, but then beyond that, I kind of get sick of it. And I, of course, I could never get it to bloom again and I didn't even want to try. But these articles are inspiring and I just love the story of that Halifax man who was growing his poinsettia into this Mongo poinsettia for 19 years. Very sweet, sweet story. In the number eight spot, I wanted to include something on Photoshop because I'm talking more and more to people who are looking to get into the garden with the camera and take good pictures. And part of taking good pictures is learning how to handle post-production with your images. So Photoshop can be super overwhelming. And I found this really, really handy article. And it's so simple. It's called Your First Three Steps to Learning Photoshop. Photoshop can be very intimidating. This article breaks it down and really starts you on your way with the first three things you should do as you begin to tackle Photoshop. Well, in the number nine and 10 spot are two articles that have to do with unique crops that are making a difference. So the first one in the number nine spot is Kenya's croton. The croton tree is producing what many people in Kenya believe is their new biofuel crop. So that's a fascinating article. And then there is a wonderful article that had to do with something called the magical fruit, and it really is referring to tepary beans. They are incredibly heat and drought resistant. And the article caught my eye because it's all about this one individual who spent time apprenticing with farmers on an Indian reservation in Arizona who were growing desert-adapted traditional crops, including 60-day corn, there's a special variety of squash, and then these tepary beans. And she says, if there's a plant and a food that most represents the people in the terrain of this place, it's the tepary bean. It's the marker of the resilience of the desert people. And I loved the last paragraph in this article. It said, people scatter across the garden, laughing and talking, making holes for the tepary beans and covering them with soil. In the waning light, Johnson, a tribal member, explains that in traditional folklore, the white tepary beans represent the stars in the night sky. He describes the Milky Way made of tepary beans, a reminder that we are watched over and that there are resources right at our feet in the form of seeds and soil. 
So just lovely. You know, the other thing that I do in the Facebook group is I will curate recipes throughout the week because, of course, you can't help but stumble on some wonderful recipes. And there were three recipes that I shared in the group this week. You know, I'm a new subscriber to Milk Street, that wonderful new magazine that was created by Christopher Kimball. And he shared a wonderful tip on storing, preserving, and using ginger. So that's in the group this week. There is a pomegranate beet and hidden greens smoothie that looks fantastic and I'm a huge smoothie drinker and maker every single morning for me and the kids so this is one that's going to be on our try list for this winter and then finally there is a really great soup recipe and I love soup this time of year of course and it's an easy broccoli and roasted garlic soup recipe and it was featured on the daily dish in the LA Times. So that's the top 10 list and the recipes for this week that made it into the Facebook group. You don't have to take notes. If there's anything that aroused your curiosity and you'd like to learn more, go ahead and check out the Facebook group. Just look for Still Growing Podcast Group in Facebook, and the group will show right up, and you can request to join. And all of the articles that I've talked about today, in addition to other articles, will show up on the page. Well, tis the season, you guys. Tis the season for getting ready for your garden for 2017. And I've had a number of requests from some local friends to do an episode of this type for you. And so today I thought this is the perfect day to do it. This is the perfect day because no one else is going to be talking about this right now because we're pre-season, but it really makes it the perfect time to tackle this task. And what I'm talking about is getting ready to garden online using a resource that we're all familiar with, Craigslist. And so I wanted to share with you today some of my tips and tricks for using Craigslist for gardening. And by getting you set up now in the off season, you can be setting up your searches and your email alerts so that when gardening season does start to heat up, you will be ready and prepared. And in the meantime, you just might score some deals that came along in the off season. So let's get going. I want to get started by talking a little bit about how to set up a Craigslist alert and how to save that search. Because most of us are creatures of habit. And when we shop online through a resource like Craigslist, we invariably search for the same things over and over and over again. And curating those lists is something I'm very passionate about. And so I used to keep a tablet that had a running list of things I liked to search for. And then I realized I could save those searches and then set up email alerts so that if those items became available, I would get notified on my email. I didn't even have to go to Craigslist Craigslist, and search for that item. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you haven't ever been on Craigslist is to set up an account if you don't already have one. If you do already have one, go to the My Account on the Craigslist homepage for your area. And from here, you can make sure that your email and password or login are all set up correctly. I know yesterday I was just on making sure that my email was up to date because I don't want my Craigslist emails going into my main email box because it'll just clutter it up. So I created an email account just for Craigslist Uh, alerts. And so now when I'm looking for things, I can just go into that account and know that everything in there is pretty much going to be Craigslist alerts only. So I really like that tip. If you haven't done that, give it a try. Um, The other thing is, is do a normal search. Begin getting familiar with Craigslist by just conducting a normal search for whatever it is you want. So nothing fancy here. no, No different terminology. We're not ruling out words. We're just going to search for this item and let whatever comes up, just let it populate and let it just pop up. Now, in a little bit, I'm going to talk to you about how you can narrow down your search to get very specific about the item that you're looking for, especially if you're looking for something and the results tend to give you a lot of what you don't want instead of what you do want, which is one of the reasons why sometimes people get frustrated with Craigslist. So once you learn the secrets to how to refine your search, I think you'll find a lot of gratification that you can really clear through just the 
sheer number of things that are on Craigslist to get to the exact item that you're looking for. But for now, at this point, I just want you to begin by searching for an item. Once you have clicked search, you will notice at the top of the page, in the right of the search box, there's a link that says Save Search. Go ahead and click this to save your search terms. And by clicking this, Craigslist is going to automatically save your search to your account. And then the most genius part of this is that you can go back into this search You can edit it, you can delete it, you can change it, you can tweak it in any way that you want. So I always tell people to begin by just conducting a search and then saving that search because it's in the refinement of that original search where the magic really happens. Once you click Save to save your search, you will get taken to a page that lists all of your saved searches. And you can get here anytime by clicking my account and then hitting the searches tab at the top of that page. Now I'm going to warn you, if you create a number of searches, and I have probably about 50 in my saved searches account tab, you will have to kind of scroll through them from time to time and maybe clean up your searches a little bit because maybe you're no longer looking for antlers and you're looking for something else, a rain barrel or what have you. So every now and then, some of the things that you're looking for become obsolete either because you've changed your mind or you've already secured that item. Whatever the case, just know that once you save your search, you can find all of those searches saved under the My account tab. Now the next part is I think the most crucial part once you've saved a search and that is to set up an alert. When you look at your list of searches, you're going to see there's a box called alert. There's a column there. And if you click that and turn on alert for your saved search, you will begin to get emails about the item that you're looking for. Now, the email that you receive will list with photos all of the items that are already appearing online under your search term. So once a new item is posted, Craigslist will send you an updated email to show you the new results since the last alert. And then that's basically it. Voila. You get all of these emails, these heads up on what you want when it gets posted. And like so many other things in life, the early bird catches the worm. So this is where the email alerts become really important. Because if you're looking for a high item, you've got to be first, got to be Johnny on the spot to get that item. And usually that means you're going to reply to the seller with an email saying, hey, I want that item. And I love blogger Victoria Elizabeth Barnes, who talks all the time about shopping on Craigslist. She scores a lot of really wonderful things as she's rehabbing her house. Anyway, she shared this fabulous post about this giant antique card catalog that she'd found on Craigslist. And right in the middle of her blog post about this card catalog, she shared her secret on how to stand out from the 400 emails that the seller is going to get. And she said, you must be the person who requires nothing. You have to be a beacon of simplicity and straightforwardness, especially if you really want it. So here's what she said to write. Hi, I want that. I can come over anytime. I can move it myself. I don't need your help. Here's my phone number. And I loved that. I thought it was brilliant. Now, when I'm on Craigslist, I'm usually looking for things that are pretty local to me because I just don't have time to drive a great distance to secure things. But what I will do, since I am looking pretty close to home, is I'll mention to the seller, hey, I'm close to you, so I can come over anytime. Now, before I share my list of curated searches that I use regularly, even right now in Craigslist, I want to walk through a few other tips and tricks with you, things that friends have shared with me and ideas that I've heard from listeners on the show. First and foremost is the fact that there is a farm and garden section on Craigslist. And in this section, 
people will sell plants, extra plants that they have or plants that they want to get rid of because they're going to do something different in that space. And I remember the time that I had discovered this, that there were actually plants for sale on Craigslist. I went a little crazy and I actually made some really good friends in the process. But let me just say that when you're doing that, when you're buying plants on Craigslist, there are some real advantages to doing that. What I always tell people is, by the time you're buying a plant from you know somebody local on Craigslist that plant is already acclimatized to our area so you know that saying with perennials the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. Usually by the time you're buying a plant from someone on Craigslist, the plant has already leaped. You are getting a very mature plant that knows exactly what it's like to grow in your area. So that's a huge benefit. Another benefit of buying plants on Craigslist is that you can talk to the grower and you can ask them, what's it like to grow this plant? Where should I grow it? What's been your experience? Is it a thug? How do you control it? What do you like to do with it? Those growers are so happy to share that information with you. And oftentimes I find, I mean, I really can't help myself. I strike up a conversation with a lot of people that I meet. But when I'm with a a grower of a plant that I'm interested in buying on Craigslist, we usually end up talking about 10 other things in their garden. And the next thing you know, they're sending me home with divisions of other things that they have. So I have a lot of things in my garden that I've received from growers on Craigslist that end up being becoming friends of mine. And it's just tremendous. So I like that resource. Sometimes you can even secure these plants for free. So sometimes people are posting on Craigslist that they're just willing to give away the plant material. They just want somebody to come and pick it up. Now, some gardeners are who post on Craigslist are willing to trade plants. So if you have a lot of something and you want to do a swap with someone, that's also a wonderful opportunity. While, you know, others are just going to give it away on a first come first serve basis. So again, that's where that email alert will come in handy. Let's say you're looking for a specific kind of plant and you want to get it and you want to get it quickly. That email alert will be very important to you as you get ready for the gardening season. And you want to make sure that you get that in your search term and you set up those alerts so that the minute somebody shares that on Craigslist, you can be one of the first to arrive. Because, of course, there's not an infinite supply. You're not going to a nursery. You're going to someone's home and they only have so many. So you want to be one of the first there if there's a specific plant that you're looking for. For myself, there was this woman in Maple Grove that was a lover of hostas. She's got so many varieties of hostas and she's worked at a number of nurseries throughout the year. And she has this magnificent recall when it comes to hostas. I don't know how she does it, but she can look at a hosta and tell you the variety and all kinds of things about hostas. I just love her to death. Well, here's what happened. She had this sale on Craigslist and I knew that the following year I was going to be in a garden tour. So I kind of recognized who she was by the way she had posted about her plant sale. And so I was really excited to come over there. And when I went to her house, her husband is digging up these hostas for me and they were huge. They were just crazy, crazy big. And of course, you'd never get that at a nursery. But I wanted plants that were seriously established so that by the following summer, when I I'm in my uh, garden tour, my garden looked full and lush and established. And this was kind of a hack, a kind of quick way to get there in this new bed that I'd created. So as luck would have it, I fill my car. I have this car topper that I put on top of the van. That was loaded with hostas. The back seats of the van are loaded with hostas. And I leave with all of these hostas to make a beautiful border on this bed. And then I even had some extras to fill in spaces in other parts of my garden. And these hostas were mature. I mean, they're two feet, three feet across, just amazing, glorious. Well, Carol ends up coming to my garden tour the following uh, summer to see her plants in their new home. And it was a treat for her. And it was a treat for me because not only did we get to do the walk around together, but 
she was able to tell me what I had bought because, of course, by the time you get home and you've unloaded your van and it maybe takes you a couple of days to get everything in the ground, you can't even remember the names or the varieties of these things. But having her kind of come back and then talk to me one more time about the different things that I'd bought from her, it was just wonderful. So so if you end up finding a friend, making a friend over the plants that they're giving you out of their garden, which oftentimes happens, you know, see if over time they'd be willing to come back and take a look at your garden and maybe give you ideas on plant placement or maybe fill in some of the missing pieces about the things that you're purchasing, you know, things that you didn't think to ask before you actually own them for a while. You know, my one of my favorite sayings is you have to grow it to know it. And so you can't really ask the questions that you would ask about the plant until you've had some experience growing it for a while. Okay, so we're getting closer to my list of things that I'm searching for, but I wanted to share with you some of the things other listeners have shared with me that they search for on Craigslist because I thought these were great ideas as well. So one listener wrote me and said that they always look for bluestone, which is a great idea. If you have an area, a patio, what have you, where you're looking for stone, you need to fill in a particular area, or you just have a small little project and you don't really want to buy a ton of stone, finding stone on Craigslist is pretty easy. Another listener wrote me and said, I always look for bird cages. They specifically look for the bird cages that are elevated, that are already on a metal stand and then they turn that bird cage into kind of a wardian case. I thought that was a genius idea as a little plant holding area or display area. I love that because it can get your containers up off the ground and also kind of set them apart, make them a little bit special because you're putting them inside this, you know, bird cage. And some of these are pretty substantial. They sent me a picture of this bird cage and oh my gosh, it was probably two feet by three feet, something. It was a very, very big bird cage, and then they turned it into basically a a wardian case or a terrarium of some kind to hold plant material. Wheelbarrows are another great thing. A lot of people wrote in and said they love to get wheelbarrows on Craigslist. One person even secured a hoop house on Craigslist. So they went to buy the hoop house. They had to take it down themselves. Then they had to transport it. And of course, best laid plans, they actually didn't get to putting the hoop house back up on their property for another year. That's what happens, right? You buy it, you're all excited, and then life gets in the way and you don't get to it. But they had it. They got their hoop house on on Craigslist for about $20, if you can believe that. Another thing that is always on Craigslist that I always chuckle about is pond shells, pond liners, all kinds of pond water feature accessories. So if you are planning on doing a little project like that with the kids or by yourself or maybe under a rain chain this year, uh, check out Craigslist first before you go and buy a, a expensive kit somewhere. It might be a great option for you. Bulbs. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Bulbs. You can get great like canna bulbs or other kinds of bulbs on a Craigslist. So, you know, oftentimes I find that the bulbs that are from somebody who is a massive canna grower actually do better. I don't know. They just seem like they, they've they been trained on what to do in my climate. And so, uh, I you know, I can kind of borrow from that excellent competency that the other gardener had by the time I get that bulb stock. So I, I love that those bulbs have been vetted. They're usually very hardy and super producers for me on in my garden. You know, another thing here, oh, I couldn't read this writing here, but it's a cupola. Coppola? Cupola. Francis Ford Coppola. And I'm talking about a cupola. Yes, a cupola. So a cupola is that little square, looks like a little house, and it's usually on top of a roof line, and then somebody will put a weather vane on top of it. Um, Sometimes if you're creating like a garden shed, or you're building a garden shed, or you're building some type of garden structure, it can look really cute to have a cupola on top. So Craigslist 
where are you going to find a cupola? You might find one on Craigslist and have it just be a complete treasure with this total backstory that just will warm your heart. You never know. So I liked that idea. I might have to actually add that to my list here. Okay. And then let's see. Three other things that are last on this listener list here is shipping crates. And pallets, of course. If you're looking for those, Craigslist would be a great spot. And then last but not least, I had a ton of people write in and say that they have used Craigslist to find bathtubs or some type of tub material to hold plants. So kind of a uh, repurposed plant container. Okay. So here it is. We have arrived at the moment. I'm going to share my top 25 search terms for Craigslist, and you can set these up in your account as well. In fact, why not just pop open Craigslist right now? We'll put these searches in together, and then you can start getting email alerts on when these items become available in your area and start to stock that garden for 2017. Okay, drum roll. All right, here we go. All right, so the first term on my list is the word tiered, T-I-E-R-E-D. I love tiered plant stands, tiered holders, tiered tables. And even now, as I just looked this up, there is this gorgeous obelisk wrought iron plant stand that's 20 bucks on Craigslist. I can't remember how I stumbled on using this word, but this particular search has brought me to a lot of really fun items for my garden. So the word tiered is the very first thing, one of the oldest search terms that I have in my account list. Number two on the list is the search for birdbath, two words, or birdbath, one word. Now, this is where I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to use search terms and special characters to whittle down your search to get exactly what you're looking for. You know, you can't get in the mind of the person that's posting on Craigslist to know, do they know how to spell? Do they even care if it's spelled correctly or do they just want to sell their item? So sometimes when you're searching for something, you have to anticipate that they may spell the word incorrectly and you're going to have to come up with both spellings in order order to potentially cast the widest net and catch the item that you're looking for, the perfect item that you're looking for. So in the case of bird bath, I did this search where I typed it in bird bath, two words, and then I typed it in with one word altogether, bird bath. And in Craigslist, they use these things called Boolean search operators. And basically, they're special characters on your keyboard that tell Craigslist how to search for the item. So for instance, in the case of bird bath, two words, and then bird bath, one word, what I do is I type in the first word, bird bath, one word, and then I use this character that's called a vertical pipe, which is basically this straight up and down line. And if you look down on your keyboard, it's usually right above the return key. And it's the same key that you would use to make a backslash. So on the bottom of the key is the backslash. And then if you hit shift, it's this straight up and down line and they call it a vertical pipe. So if you're typing in bird bath, you type in bird bath one word, then you leave a space and type your uh, second word or your two words. So bird bath and the vertical pipe in Craigslist really acts as an or, as the word or. So bird bath one word or bird bath two words. And this vertical pipe thing comes in so handy if you want to search for multiple items at once or if you need to mitigate a spelling issue like in the instance of the word bird bath. My third favorite search term is the words Smith and Hawken. So I don't include the and. I just type in Smith Hawken and then see what comes up because we used to have some Smith and Hawken stores here in town and then they all ended up closing. 
But I do like finding some of their pieces. By now, some people are ready to part with some things, or some people continue to order from them online. And this leads me to my fourth favorite search term, which is up here in Minnesota. It's Bachman's because that's the flagship nursery in town. And that's the store where most people would go to buy their landscape garden design materials. So I always look for that nursery. So if you have a nursery in town that is maybe a little high end, that sells really lovely things, make sure that the name of that nursery is in one of your searches. Now, search number five is for the word bench, and this is a great little search to teach you another skill in your Craigslist toolbox, and that is how to exclude words from your search. So for instance, my search is for the word bench, and then I exclude words that I don't want included in this search, such as the word bath or shower. I don't want those words in the search. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bunch of bath benches or shower benches, and that's not what I'm looking for. And the other word that I exclude is the word weight, because I'm not looking for a weight bench. I'm not pressing weights here. I'm looking for a bench for my garden. So how I optimize my search here is I put my search term in, and then I precede these other words with a hyphen or a dash to remove any results that would contain the word that I don't want. So for my search for the word bench, it looks like this. It says bench, and then minus bath, minus shower, minus weight. I do not want those things coming up in the results for this search. And, you know, as I look at the results right now, I'm getting all kinds of benches, you know, small little coat room benches, toy chests, that kind of thing. I'm not looking for a toy chest. So in the future, I could uh, put a dash with the word toy to eliminate toy chests. I'm also not looking for anything upholstered, obviously, because it's going to be outside. So I could take out the word upholstered and just do a dash with the word upholstered. But that's a way that you can refine your search and optimize your search so that you get exactly what you're looking for. And I'm always looking for benches. Search number six is for a plant stand. So just the word plant stand. This is another one where you're going to post use that vertical pipe, the straight up and down line that's right above the backslash. So you just hit shift backslash and you'll have a vertical pipe. But plant stand, again, can be spelled two ways or people can spell it two ways. Plant stand, one word, and then vertical pipe, plant stand, two words. And that way, again, I cast a wider net and I'll be looking at all of the plant stands that are available on Craigslist. My seventh search is for the word wicker. And I never used to search for wicker until a couple of summers ago when I suddenly discovered how to repair wicker. And I found that it is so easy that I now no longer am afraid to buy anything wicker. In fact, it's so easy that I teach my student gardeners how to do wicker repairs. I I kid you not, it's just that incredibly easy. So for First, let me tell you about how I search for wicker, the way that I search for it, and then I'll tell you about uh, repairing it and painting it. So the search that I use is wicker, the word wicker. Then I take out the word doll. I take out the word buggy. So it's minus doll minus buggy. And you got to leave a space in between these. Um, I take out the word bedroom, minus bedroom, because I'm not looking for bedroom furniture. I take out the word sleigh, as in sleigh bell, because a lot of wicker sleighs apparently were coming up in my search. Um, It's Minnesota. And then um, I take out the word basket. I'm not looking for baskets. I'm really looking for furniture here. I take out the word wheelchair. Sometimes you find on Craigslist these old wicker wheelchairs. That's not what I'm looking for in my garden. And then I take out the word stroller. I don't want a wicker stroller. I'm really looking for couches, uh, chairs, 
uh, patio furniture, basically. So when I do this, I end up finding mostly what I'm looking for. Here's a wicker couch. Here's a chair, an outdoor chair. Um, here is, okay, here's something that I would not want, and that would be a wicker nightstand. So I could also take out nightstand for future searches. And here's something else. I sometimes will add a term to this that will say broken, needs repair, those kinds of phrases, because if they're willing to part with a wicker piece that's slightly damaged, the price point will usually be lower. And since they're already seeing the item as damaged, they will more than likely be willing to negotiate with you. Now, one of the things that I see in my search right now that just popped up is it says wicker, cane, and rush materials. These are the things that you need to repair wicker. And all you do with these things is Pop them in a pail of water, soak them for about 10 minutes and until they're soft and pliable, and then you use that material to wrap the wicker. So one of the easiest repairs that there is to do on the planet with a wicker item is to just wrap the legs. It's one of the first things that goes bad on a lot of the, the furniture or the creations that are made with wicker. And so usually every couple of years, I go around my wicker pieces with the caning and rush materials and I just rewrap the legs. It's it's really not hard. Now, the material that you're getting, whether you get it on Craigslist or I just buy mine on Amazon, it's very inexpensive. Once you get it, it's usually in a neutral color. So it's like a tan color or a beige color. It's the natural wicker uh, caning color, I guess. So most wicker furniture is painted, and to keep it simple, I just paint all of mine white. And so the minute I'm done wrapping those legs with that caning and rush material, I just paint it white and call it a day. It looks brand new. You can't tell where the old meets the new uh, if you do a careful job. And there's tons of YouTube videos on how to repair things. And I just, a lot of times, uh, for instance, I had a chair where the seat was starting to fall through. And when I tipped the chair over, I could see at the bottom that there used to be some, uh, like a big X of, uh, of cane material that supported the seat of that chair and it had gotten broken. So a lot of times with the way the wicker material is put together, you can just use your own intuitive deduction and determine how that chair was originally put together. And then it's pretty easy to do the repair because you pretty much follow along in the space where the wicker started to break down and, and you just kind of recreate it. You do it on your own. So wicker is one of my most favorite things to look for on Craigslist because you can get so many tremendous deals and it's such an easy repair and you're just tickled to death when you are able to save a piece, an old piece, and uh, make it functional again. It's just so gratifying. Wrought iron is search number eight. So wrought iron, I love to search for. And the one thing I tell people to think about when they're searching for wrought iron is to keep an open mind. Wrought iron, just like wicker, can be painted any color. So when you're looking at these pieces on Craigslist, don't limit yourself. Don't look at it and say, oh my gosh, it's red. I hate red. Pass. No, 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 no. You need to think about these things through the eyes of, hey, this can be painted. It's not set in stone. Wrought iron is one of the easiest things to paint. Okay, search number nine is for the word bust. So B-U-S-T. And what we're looking for here are statues, the heads of statues, just the heads, because Head statues look great in the garden, especially if it's a damaged head statue and you can put a little succulent or a cactus or something that would like to grow in that small little space on the head statue. They just look really charming. And the way that I modify this search on Craigslist is I type the word in bust and then I subtract the word dress because I'm not looking for any dresses, obviously. And I subtract the word clothing. So the search looks like this, bust, 
minus dress, and that's all one word, the minus sign and then dress, and then minus clothing. Because of course, we want to exclude those things from our search. And even right now, as I look at this, there is this really pretty Roman uh, lady bust head. And it's great. It's perfect, actually. It looks like it has a little bit of damage on it. And I would love to get that and put it in my garden in one of my more formal areas. And here's the trick. Okay, this is why a lot of people don't do it, is they don't realize that they can weatherproof those busts. There are all kinds of tutorials online about weatherproofing statues for extreme cold or heat. And uh, very simply, for most of mine, I just put on a UV protecting finishing spray that just kind of helps slows down that fading process. But honestly, if I'm able to find a damaged bust on Craigslist for, let's say, $10, $20, and I get a couple of seasons out of it in the garden, I'm thrilled. That's all I need. So give bust a go uh, for your Craigslist search. Search number 10 is for the term lattice. I mean, it's such a classic garden search term. I don't exclude a ton here because sometimes I might even repurpose something that would be an indoor item with lattice and I want to take that piece of it or parts of it or all of it and repurpose it for something outside. So usually I will just leave that term in general and just search and see what's available. Never hurts to have some lattice for repairs that you need to do or for building something on your property. Lattice is a great term to search for. The 11th term, I'm looking for two things, and I just put them together in my search term, and it's the words arbor and gazebo. And so again, I'm using that vertical pipe, so I'll put arbor and then the vertical pipe, which is again right above the backslash key, above the return key. And so you just hit shift backslash and you'll have that vertical pipe and then the word gazebo. Now, most gardeners realize that an arbor is different from a gazebo, but people in general don't always differentiate between that those terms. And so again, you have to think like a seller, like someone who's not really familiar maybe with the, the language of uh, items, elements in the garden. And so I will put the word arbor and then gazebo together because I really am usually looking for an arbor, a replacement for an arbor that's in disrepair or something like that. And I love looking for that. Now, when I do this search, I exclude certain words and I'll tell you what those are uh, right now. Let me pull that up for you. Okay, so when I'm looking for arbor, uh, and gazebo, I will exclude the words saw, S-A-W. I will exclude the words long board, uh, stub, falls graph, the uh, dish manufacturer, the China, because apparently there was a, a arbor design or pattern that they'd used and those were popping up a lot. I will take out the word grinding, press, fly, tractor, Blade and mill, those words, I'll get a minus sign in front of them because I don't want those coming up in my search term. So now when I click on this, it's all cleaned up. And as I look at it, it's pretty much what I'm looking for. I see some arbors that were used for weddings or somebody wants me to come and get their wrought iron arbor that they're no longer using. You'll see a, a lot of different things here, but if you're looking for an arbor, that's how you're going to want to craft that search. And just bear in mind that sometimes the term that you know the item is, um, somebody else might call it something else. So Sometimes it's handy to have a picture of what you're looking for and then just ask random people, well, what do you call this thing? And you'll hear all the different words for that item come up that may or may not be on the money. Okay, search term number 12 is trellis. 
Search number 13 is statue. So very much like the bust that we were looking for earlier, um, I'll do the same thing with statue. And again, I'm looking for statues that maybe aren't perfect, um, maybe not even outdoor statues. I'll turn them into an outdoor statue with some uh, weather-resistant spray, that kind of a thing. Search number 14 is for the word earn. And here it gets modified with the words uh, minus coffee, so minus the word coffee, minus the word heavy. I've decided even if it's fantastic, I don't want it if it's too heavy because I like to move things around on my property. And if it's too hard for me to move, I don't want it. I took out the word Christmas. I didn't want a Christmas urn. And is it majolica? Is that how you say it? But I took that word out because that was always coming up as well. So hopefully what you're discovering as you're listening to me go through this list is that sometimes the results that you're getting are very regional. So the things that are coming up here in Minnesota, like for instance, Falls Graph probably, are very you know Minnesotan, very Scandinavian, where if you were searching in California or in Florida or in Oregon, Oregon, you might find that your your results are different and you're going to need to add other modifiers to your search. Okay, search number 15 is probably the search that I have consistently used the most throughout the years. And it is the search that I am always thrilled to find. I probably do find something every year with this search. And the search term is the word fountain. So number 15 is the word fountain. And I have, oh man, I probably have seven running fountains in my garden from front to back when everything's in running full steam ahead in the summertime. And the reason I like to get fountains is that people give up on fountains because they don't know how to make them work. They don't know how to care for them. Filling the fountain is a pain. And if there's a pump that breaks or a piece that breaks, they're not quite sure what to do. I could do a whole show on fountain repair and my fountain tricks and, and tips. So maybe I'll have to do that for you guys in the spring. But I adore finding fountains through Craigslist. And I do modify this one as well. There's a number of little modifying tricks. So the first one is you're going to type in the word fountain, then you're going to subtract the word drinking because we're not looking for a drinking fountain. So minus drinking, minus painting, minus soda, minus punch, minus desk. We're not looking for a tabletop fountain. We're looking for the really big fountains that we can use outside, minus the word table, and then minus the word indoor. The indoor fountains usually are too small in scale to want to use outside. So those are good words to eliminate for your fountain. And right now I'm looking, okay, there are not very many in Minnesota, although there is this wonderful glazed fountain. Hmm, I might have to look into that. So here's my point with looking for fountains on Craigslist. Number one, these fountains usually are salvageable. They are workable. They will work, but the homeowner has given up on them. There are a number of reasons why homeowners just say, I'm done with this fountain. Number one could be the size and scale. They don't like how big it is. They don't like how it tips or they don't like the, uh, the aesthetic, the design aesthetic. It doesn't match with the feel or the flow of their home. So there's a number of reasons why they want to get rid of it based on the size. Number two, the uh, nature of the fountain. You know, it could be a super heavy duty concrete fountain, or it could be a kind of a box fountain that you might get from a big box store with a kit that you've got to put it together. Um, I, I touched on before that a lot of times when the pumps run out, when the original pump runs out, sometimes homeowner, homeowners just don't even know where to begin with that. And so something as simple as replacing a pump, they just say, okay, I'm out of here. Forget it. I'm going to give up on it. So 
There, in any case, my point in sharing all of this with you is not to be too skeptical of a fountain that a homeowner is saying they want to get rid of. Sometimes people think, oh, well, it must not hold water, that kind of thing. I, I don't think I've ever even run into that. What I do run into are broken parts, broken pieces, or just something the size, the scale, the design. The homeowner just wasn't interested in continuing to maintain the piece. So uh, fountain is a great great thing. Excellent, excellent thing to search for on Craigslist, and you can get it for a fraction of the cost. I dance a jig every spring when I am able to secure a Henry Fountain for, you know, a hundred bucks, something like that, because, I mean, those things go for five, six, seven hundred and up, depending on what you're looking for. Okay, search number 16 is the word fence. For this search, I modify it with these words. I'll say minus the word invisible, minus puller, minus chain link, minus chain, minus link, minus pet, minus blade, minus plow, minus snow, and minus temp. Because again, we don't want things like invisible fencing popping up or chain link fencing. That would not be what we're looking for for our garden. Uh, snow fencing, plow fencing, temporary fencing, again, not what we're looking for. So we want to find old picket fences or privacy screens, that kind of a thing that we can use in our garden. And that's a great way to modify it. But if you are uncertain how to modify your search, just start by looking for the word fence and then see what comes up. And then if a snow fence comes up, say, okay, I'm going to take out the word snow. Now what comes up? Oh, okay. I see it's this this crazy dog fence. Okay. I'm going to take out the word dog, what have you. So that's how I started with modifying initially is I just look and see what came up. If my search is contaminated with all these results that are completely irrelevant, then I've got to look at the words that are being used in that post and make sure that it does not apply anymore to my search. Search 17 is for windows, frames, and doors. So I'll search for windows and then use the vertical pipe and type in window frame and then another vertical pipe and doors. And then the the terms that I take out are commercial, steel, truck, and car. Search number 20 is for potting bench with a vertical pipe after the word potting bench and then add the word table because sometimes People call it a potting bench or a potting table, and I happen to get a very lovely potting bench that I mentioned on my Christmas gift guide on Craigslist last year, and they were still selling it on Amazon, and I absolutely love this potting bench that I got. It folds completely up, so it can be totally flat against a wall for storage when you're not using it. And it's just tremendous. And then bonus, the owner had already painted it this gorgeous gray blue. So it looked really beautiful in the garden in my outdoor dining room. And I just fell in love with it. It was wonderful. I would have never taken the time to paint it. So uh, Craigslist was great for that. Somebody did that for me, basically. All right. We are in the home stretch. Number 21 is porch swing. So I was inspired to add this to my list this past summer, right at the end of the summer, because my girlfriend thought to look up the term porch swing on Craigslist, and she found this adorable, shabby, chic, white porch swing uh, on chains that all she had to do was add it to her porch, and it was gorgeous. In fact, right now, there's a porch swing for sale, and it's 40 bucks, and it's white, and it's just cute as pie. So there you go. Looking in the off-season for something like a porch swing, somebody wants to get rid of it while they're cleaning out the garage, putting their Christmas stuff away, and it's the perfect time of year if you want to try to get something like that. Number 22 is the search for the word hammock. 
and I like to look for hammock chairs or just regular hammocks for outside. We've turned the kids' swing set into kind of a hammock station, so we have three hanging hammock chairs that adults can swing in with a glass of wine at the end of the day, or the kids can go chill out there sometimes, uh, especially if they get into a fight. I'll usually in the summertime look outside, and the one that's kind of licking their wounds will be hanging in the hammock chair, kind of recounting all the injustices that have ever been committed against them, and then I'll go out there and swing beside them. And one of the things that I've done to make the hammock chairs on our swing set a little more fun to use is I have added ropes that go up and over the monkey bars where we've got the hammock chair swinging. And all you have to do is climb in your hammock chair. You can completely get in the fetal position and then reach up and grab the rope. And you can rock yourself by pulling on the rope. So uh, we love that idea. It's been a great way to repurpose the swing set. And there are so many hammock chairs on Craigslist because people have to have a spot to uh, hang them. And sometimes they, they don't have the right spot. Or like one of the ladies that I bought my hammock, chair from at a garage sale. Her husband had hung it up for her, but then he didn't do a good enough job of securing it. And she fell while she was in the hammock chair. So she definitely wanted to get rid of that hammock chair. And I was thrilled to take it off her hands because I know mine's not going to fall. Um, But yeah, a lot of people end up getting rid of them and you can get them way cheaper on Craigslist. The next search, search number 23, is for wagon wheel. And I'm talking about those old time, you know, wheel pieces, those antique farm implement uh, and mechanical parts that kind of become instant art when they're hung on a fence or a gate. Um, Or you can do what Lori Neverman was doing with hers from Common Sense Homesteading. She was putting a wagon wheel in the ground, you know, the one with the big old spokes. And the spokes were her dividers for her plants. So I loved that idea. And then I think Tara Nolan had showed a picture of someone who had done a very similar thing. And each one of the spokes was a divider. And around the wheel, they had planted different herbs and it looked adorable. Once everything was very lush and growing up through this wagon wheel, it was just, oh gosh, it was so eye-catching. Now, search number 24 is for a wooden ladder. And let me see, how I had created the search is I used the word wood and then I used that vertical pipe and then the word wooden so that I could expand my search to either a wood ladder or a wooden ladder and get more results. And my point in searching for a wooden ladder is I have a very good friend who found a wooden ladder, put it in her garden, it was about six feet tall, and then used it as a trellis for her clematis, and it looked fantastic. So wooden ladder is on my search for this summer. And then number 25 is barrel. So I use the search term whiskey with a vertical pipe and then wine. So I'm looking for either a whiskey or a wine barrel. And I use these for my rain chains, but also for my water feature gardens. So sometimes I'll just fill the barrel with water and then set all of my water plants inside. I love to see those in the summertime. I'll have a fountain usually pouring into it. And then And here's my bonus one, number 26. I'll give you one more. And this one I had actually talked with Tara Nolan about back in her episode when we were discussing her book, Raised Bed Revolution. But I use the search term raised bed. And then I use that vertical pipe again, that key, and I will type in the word foosball because my idea that I'd love to try this summer is to turn a foosball table into a raised bed. How many times have I gone on Craigslist and found an old foosball table that they want to get rid of, nobody wants to buy the darn thing, take up space in their basement, but to transform it into a vegetable, a raised bed vegetable garden would be really cute. And then I'm trying to decide if I would leave the handlebars in there and then have those kind of be, you know, clever dividers for rows. That kind of might be 
kind of cute. So we'll see what ends up happening there. But that is an idea I've been playing around with since last summer, and we'll see if we make it happen in the garden this summer. But, you know, I found two raised beds last summer, and I don't think I spent more than $150 on both of them, and they were very well done. One was a, or actually three, one was a Gronomics bed. So that was all professionally put together. Another was a homemade bed that was just huge. And the lady actually drove it to my house, which was totally unexpected. And then the last one was just another kind of pre- put together manufactured bed and uh, that one had been stained already for me. So again, another great resource, Craigslist, for raised beds if that's something that you're trying to go to in your garden this summer. I would say get looking now as people are clearing out their spaces and freshening up for spring. They're going to want to get those off their property and it will become a great resource for you, especially if you are getting your search terms lined up now and setting up your email alerts. Well, that's it for the show today, you guys. Those are my 25, actually 26 things that I regularly look for on Craigslist. And you know my little secret tricks and tips now for how I modify those searches to get exactly what I'm looking for, to whittle down and narrow down those search results so that my email inbox doesn't get flooded with things I'm not interested in, and I only see the things that I'm really looking for. So have fun with it. Play around with it. This is a great week to set these things up because once you get going and you get busy in the season when it starts to warm up, you you just won't have time or you won't think about doing it. Now is a great time to do it while it's still winter and you're in the dreaming phase for your garden for 2017. Well, that's it for the show today. I want to thank you for joining me. I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, David Myers, Ein Kadena, and David Gregerson. And just a reminder, I'll have all of the information that I shared on the show today under the Still Growing podcast page on my website. My website is sixfootmama.com. That's the number six, F-T-M-A-M-A.com. And my website is the home for the podcast. So you'll find the podcast all the episodes there, all of the show notes and information about today's show will be on that show notes page. And if you really like the show, again, I'd like to invite you to join that still growing podcast group on Facebook. It's a great place to interact with other listeners of the show and the guests of the show, like last week's guest, Peggy Ann Montgomery of American Beauty Native Plants. And of course, after this week's show, I'd love it if you join and then share your Craigslist finds in the group. I'd love to see those pictures and get inspired by the things that you're searching for. Plus, who doesn't want to brag about their good find on Craigslist? So go ahead, brag away. I'd love to see what you found on Craigslist. So go ahead, check it out. I'd love to meet you in the Still Growing Podcast group on Facebook. You can find it by either searching for that term in the search bar in Facebook, Still Growing Podcast group, or just go over to my website at sixfootmama.com and there's a tab there that will take you right into the Facebook group and then you just have to request to join and then I'll admit you into the group and you'll be right there. So you'll get all of the curated articles and content that I share throughout the week, including recipes, as well as being able to interact with listeners and guests and share those Craigslist finds. That will be marvelous, wonderful. I'd love to see them. Well, we'll see if I can manage to get the Christmas decorations down this week. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm very determined. We've got another weekend of basketball, but we'll see if next week kind of settles down a little bit and I'm able to get that accomplished. So I'll let you know if I manage to get that big to-do off of my list. I hope so. And don't forget, if you want to hear my Little John's Dare essay that he read at the Dare graduation ceremony this past week, you can go ahead and listen to it after the outro music music for today's episode. Have a great week, everyone. Still Growing with Jennifer Ebling is a sixfootmama.com production made in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. Still Growing is a weekly gardening podcast dedicated to helping you and your garden grow. 
Well, hey, everyone. Thanks for sticking around here after the show to hear John give his remarks at the D.A.R.E. graduation ceremony that took place at his school, Basswood Elementary, in Maple Grove, Minnesota. John's in fifth grade, and his entire class had to write an essay about avoiding drugs and violence. And then a winning essay was picked from each classroom. And then those individuals from each classroom got to stand up and read their essay aloud to the entire class. And all the parents were there, all the kids were there. And John was the very first one to stand up and speak, I think, because his last name starts with an E. But then at the very, very end of the presentation, they picked two winners for the top two grand prizes. And John won a lunch with the police chief next Friday. So by the time you're hearing this episode, John John is getting picked up and taken to Angino's Pizza in Maple Grove for lunch with the police chief. And I know he is tickled to death to have that opportunity. He's just absolutely over the moon excited. So, and we're excited for him. So, I brought my Roland Ederall recorder with to the presentation that day. And I recorded John's little segment, his reading of his DARE essay about avoiding drugs and violence. And his essay is called, Standing for Good Life Choices. Now, before John reads his essay, you'll hear Officer Marinello just quickly give an overview of the fact that they had this essay contest, and then he'll introduce John. A final requirement for students to graduate from the D.A.R.E. program is they have to write an essay on resisting drugs and violence, and they have to read it, their essay, to their peers. With the help from the fifth grade teachers, we then pick one essay from each class to be read at the D.A.R.E. graduation today. I now invite the following students forward to share their D.A.R.E. essays. My name is John Abeline and I'm 11 years old. I'm the youngest of four kids in my family. I like the D.A.R.E. program because it teaches kids about staying drug free and avoiding violence. The lesson that was most important to me was being more self-aware. In my family, when kids mess up, my dad will always ask us, was that smart or not smart? Honestly, it took me a while to realize that if my dad was asking me that question, that the answer is always not smart. <laughs> Dare help me see that this is the same question. I know. Dare help me see that this same question applies to bigger life choices, with things like alcohol, drugs, and violence, because getting involved with any of these things is definitely not smart. Dare program is a good experience for kids. In fact, I actually feel safer after going through the Dare program. I see Dare as a, another layer of protection like being safe in my home or safe with my parents watching me. Dare is helping me to avoid making bad life choices and not smart behaviors like drinking, taking drugs, or resorting to violence, which is why I'm taking a stand for good life choices. To me, it is important to be drug free and avoid violence for three main reasons. First, I like my life. I enjoy being alive. Drugs and violence can definitely kill you. Second, I value good health. For example, I do not drink a ton of pop or eat bad food because I want to stay healthy for my life and to play basketball. Why would I want to ruin my health with drugs or violence? Finally, I love my family and friends. When I hurt, my family and friends hurt. Why would I want? Why would I never? Wait, why would I want to disappoint or cause pain to my parents, my siblings, my grandparents, or my friends? Taking drugs or being violent not only hurts the person making those bad life choices but also hurts everybody around them. I will use what I've learned in the D.A.R.E. program to help me continue make, to make good life choices. I am young, but I am smart. I realize that the things that I'm learning today are going to make me into the person that will be as an adult. D.A.R.E. fits in perfectly with the things that my parents and my family already value, like taking care of myself and others. D.A.R.E. gave me extra facts and information to support the good life choices that are important to me. For instance, I learned that smoking and alcohol actually kill thousands of people every single year. Additionally, I learned how to respond to bullying, and it's great to have a plan when it happens because it happens around us kids sooner or later. Finally, I learned about secondhand smoke and how much it can affect your health. Growing up in a smokery home, secondhand smoke wasn't something I had to worry about. Now when I walk past someone smoking, I hold my breath or walk around them. In summary, I thank Dare and their good information for kids and for helping me to make a stand for and for helping me to stand for making a good life choices my whole life through. 
Now that's smart. 